Hi everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Longwood Comp Studies YouTube channel. My name is Jacob, and join us as we meet and play Mario Kart against the newest comp professor, Professor Marks. Professor Marks, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing all right. So we can go ahead and yeah, select our characters and stuff. All right. I do so not our first do well. question, yeah, could you just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, why you came to Farmville and Longwood? What have you been enjoying it? What uh, your plans to take away from that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been enjoying it a lot so far. Mm -hmm. So I moved to Farmville from UNC Chapel Hill, where I'm finishing up my dissertation, as okay. we speak. Um, so yeah, I've been looking for opportunities to teach. Mm -hmm. UNC is a great school, but it's very research focused. And I love my research. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important. But I found myself just kind of every day that I had a really good class was mm -hmm. like my best day of the week. Um, okay. So I came to Longwood with that kind of priority in mind. And so far, the students have been amazing, lived up to all my expectations and hopes. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad they have welcomed you. They'd be in trouble if they hadn't. <laughs> um, so this is kind of a little like random question. Uh, but if you could be an animal for one day, uh, what would you be? I would be specifically my cat. Specifically your cat. OK, yeah. could you tell us a little bit about your cat? Um, her name is Fig. OK. And like she's a little tuxy. She's adorable, very pretty. Mm -hmm. But all she has to do is lay in a sunbeam all day oh, long. Oh, yeah. No responsibilities. Mm, that's true. Full dish of food. Mm -hmm. She's no She's worries. pampered. And I feel like I could catch up on the sleep. Yeah. Ooh, true. That's a good point. And then what has been your favorite part of Longwood uh, so far? The people in mm -hmm. general. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mentioned students, but also just like everyone from my landlord to the people I work with in the department, random people I meet on the street. Mm -hmm. They're like, hi, welcome to Farmville. Aww. What can we do for you? And <laughs> I'm from a small town mm -hmm. originally, so that is just really wholesome and welcoming. It makes me feel yeah. warm and fuzzy. OK, so uh, what small town are you from? I am from Kent City, Michigan. Okay. It's actually about a quarter of the size of Farmville. Oh, wow. OK. <laughs> it's technically a village. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> OK. <laughs> but very cool. So um, you're well-traveled, uh, having worked in China and um, Ta Tanzania. I hope I didn't butcher that. Yeah, uh, Zanzibar specifically. OK, yes. And you could, you could just tell us a little bit about that, your favorite parts of that. Uh, Sure, if I can drive and talk. I, at the I same was gonna time. say, yeah, we have to <laughs> multitask here. Um, yeah, so I, because I went, I lived in a small town, I was very focused on getting out of that small town mm -hmm. for a right. large portion of my life. Um, and I definitely did that. So I went out of state for college um, to Villanova University. And one of the things that I loved about them is the number of study abroad experiences they had. Mm -hmm. So I, First went to China. I studied Chinese since middle school. No, red shell. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't speak it very well now. It's very tough. Yeah, despite like, no, banana, God. Uh, I don't speak it very well despite having learned it technically for eight years. Um, but I did get the opportunity to live in Shanghai for Ooh. a summer and do a lot of what you guys are doing. Yeah. <laughs> Learn about media writing and the world of kind of PR and marketing, specifically around um, expat or education in China. Um, and then at the same time, I wasn't like quite sated with mm -hmm. <laughs> that level of travel. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was actually kind of a random circumstance. A friend introduced me to this program called America's Unofficial Ambassadors okay. um, that set up um, uh. <laughs> trips and internships in uh, Zanzibar. And okay. so Zanzibar is technically part of Tanzania. It's semi-autonomous. Um, it's an island off okay. the coast of Tanzania. So it's beautiful in, on the Indian Ocean. Mm. It's a big tourist wow. hub. Um, and so I started working with a female empowerment NGO there for a summer. And I loved it so much. I love the people so much. And it's where I started doing research yeah. as well on the state of tourism um, and what that means for identity. So I came back for a year after I graduated college before entering grad school. There you go. Wow, that's awesome. Um, and then what would you say your favorite uh, country that you visited and what your favorite part about visiting that country was? Oh, that's a really hard question. <laughs> um, I mean, I have to say that Zanzibar is my favorite country that I've visited mm -hmm. because I loved it so much. Um, my favorite 
part of living in Zanzibar, again, is just the people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so the number of relationships I had there, like I was always going over to people's houses for dinner. I was always running into people like on the Dala Dala, which is the bus. Mm -hmm. um, I would meet my students just, you know, walking about in town. And it just kind of felt like the entire, the entire place, Stone Town, was a big college campus. It oh, just okay. felt really welcoming mm -hmm. and, and warm and familiar. Very cool. Which is a perspective not many tourists get to have mm -hmm. in a place like Zanzibar. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of your work tends to focus on um, slavery, both domestic and international. Um, what inspired you for this work and what do you believe more people should know about the culture of slavery? So really it started um, during that first summer in Zanzibar. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who travel to Tanzania, um, even though Zanzibar is not a location of the transatlantic slave mm -hmm. trade, it is the location of the East African slave trade. Oh, okay. um, it was the Sultanate of Oman for a number of years. And so a lot of the tourists there focus on learning that history whether they're from American, or from America, or from the UK, um, they ha have that <laughs> experience um, kind of in common, despite what the actual historical context mm -hmm. is in the place. And so I kind of came to this question of, okay, I was one of the lucky people who was able to spend two thousand dollars on a plane ticket to be here, mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, around all of these other people who are tourists who are in town for only like a week, and Yet it seems to be that this place is designed to talk to me specifically and my understanding of the history of slavery. Mm -hmm. What is up with that? Mm -hmm. It was a really bizarre yeah. kind of experience to, you know, lose that historical context, but at the same time, like, be making reflections about my own identity and, and place in the world. And so that's what started uh, kind of my interest in the nature of the collective memory of mm -hmm. slavery. And then, of course, when I went to grad school in North Carolina, it stayed my yes. focus. <laughs> um, I did, you know, shift my historical context to talk about the transatlantic slave trade. Um, and specifically now I'm interested in what I call plantation memorial museums. Okay. So not just plantation houses that, you know, they have all the original furniture mm -hmm. and wax figures or whatever, but places where they're trying to make it a place of memory that's dedicated to the people enslaved. Mm -hmm. And that's a really hard thing to do specifically because of the place that slavery has taken mm -hmm. in our memory. So the thing that I want people to know most about it is that it didn't end in 1865. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, we have to like continue to think about slavery and the discourses and the legacies when we talk about things like racism and violence today. Yeah. My whole life I've been on a run, uh, fugitivity as a post-racial trope and Red Dead Redemption 2 uh, is a really cool title uh, for that publication, that paper. Um, could you just give us a rundown about what that's about and why did you choose to write, uh, I guess, the paper on a game? Yeah, so as you know, I love video games. Mm -hmm. um, and my research is focused on physical places, typically okay. the actual Plantation Memorial Museums, mm -hmm. um, which are kind of hard to research during a global pandemic when mm. all the museums are closed. Yes. Um, and so I did what a lot of people did during 2020 and I played a lot of video games, mm -hmm. including Red Dead 2. Mm -hmm. um, and I was still thinking about all of the questions that inform my research, like how do we tell these stories? Who do we tell them to? What, for what reasons? In what ways? Um, and so I was really interested in the way that Arthur Morgan, even though he's existing in 1898, mm -hmm. <laughs> he's constantly surprised that slavery is a thing still. Mm -hmm. Um, even though it's been abolished technically, there, he comes across like slave smugglers mm -hmm. and, and a bunch of racial violence kind of occurs throughout the game. And he's constantly surprised by it. Um, there's even one point where he has um, one of his friends in the gang, Lenny, who is a black character, and he can't pick him out of a saloon because he's too drunk. And so Lenny's face just kind of like morphs onto everyone else's. Mm -hmm. Most of the people are white in that saloon. Um, and so I started thinking about like, post-racial discourses and how we think about, you know, the containment of slavery's narrative within 1865. Mm -hmm. And when we tell historical fictive narratives, how do we then deal with that? Mm -hmm. How do we think about, you know, the messiness of slavery and all the legacies that inform it while still 
making a game with compelling and ethical characters that we want to root for. Mm. And so that's what I really explore there is as uh -huh. you move across the map, how does the game get you to understand yourself and relationship to all of the racial violence that is in the narrative. Yeah, that's fascinating. And for you to kind of really be able to like pick that out on your own and be able to analyze it and then do it is very impressive. That's very cool. Thank I've you. not played it uh, myself, but I've heard good things and maybe, uh, maybe after reading your paper, um, I will. It sounds very cool. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna blow myself up. Uh, oh my God, okay. That's close. And so um, your current dissertation is centered around slavery in North Carolina. You touched on this briefly, um, and Louisiana. Uh, what made you choose those states, I guess, since you uh, went to UNC that made you help, or made it easier to choose uh, North Carolina, but why Louisiana, and what information about uh, your research has came up that has shocked you? So I was originally only going to focus on Whitney Plantation in Louisiana, slightly outside of New Orleans. Um, and then in my, let's see, third year at UNC, I got the opportunity to actually work on the development of a memorial wow, okay. um, with a local plantation museum called Stagville, Historic Stagville. It's a state historic site, which is a little bit different than Whitney, which is privately owned. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I knew I was gonna do that. Uh, yeah, I was like, I don't know which <laughs> way to go. Um, and so that experience just kind of opened up an entire new you know, set of things for me to analyze and write about. I've kept it to one chapter in the dissertation, but we'll see if I turn it mm -hmm. into a book, how much yeah. more room I have to explore it. Um, but yeah, it was just kind of like negotiating state mandates around what a commemorative space can look like, um, while also interviewing a lot of descendants and um, black members of the community to talk about what, what that space should look like. Why, yeah. how can they use it? Um, in a way that speaks to them, prioritizes their needs in the space, as opposed to like your white tourist, mm -hmm. um, which is what the state was largely kind of concerned with. But I'm always surprised by the questions that people ask in the museums. Okay. So um, the two most common questions at both Whitney and Stagville are, number one is what's that tree? People are obsessed with the beautiful like crepe myrtles and magnolia trees, mm. but they always ask that question, right? When we're talking about like some violence mm -hmm. um, or something really uncomfortable in the narrative. Mm -hmm. So I think it might be a way of like, let's focus back on something, yeah. something kind of beautiful. Um, and then the second question is, were there any good plantation owners? Mm. And that one is a little bit more, more pointed. Yes. Um, and so, when I've run tours or kind of like co-facilitated tours, I always like ask back, what do you mean by good? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I find that typically they're asking about their own goodness, mm -hmm. not the actual goodness of the person who owns that plantation and yes. then those people. Yeah, that's very interesting. Um, who is the most inspiring person that you have ever met? Hmm. Let's see. I mean, like in all of those, like, elementary school who is your hero essays. I always right. write about my dad mm -hmm. because he is a farmer, but he also has a medical degree and a law wow. degree. Like he has inspired me to do a lot of my education. Yeah. Um, but as I get older, honestly, it's my mom. Okay. Um, she like quit her job to take care of me when I was a kid. And at the same time, just started taking care of like everyone else in the town. Mm -hmm. um, she's a nurse by trade mm -hmm. and she kind of followed that up and so I look at her as a role model now, like I, I would like to take care of people and be that kind of like person in the community mm -hmm. that everyone looks to. Yeah. yeah, well that's awesome. All right, Professor Marks, well thank you for joining us and letting us get to know a little bit more about you. And thank you to the viewers at home for tuning in. We are lucky to have Professor Marks here and we hope that she has a great rest of her semester. Thank you. Yeah.